we will talk about how to make objects communicate to each other using override. Here's an example. We have a button and we have a target. When I click the button, it changes the background color. Simple as that. This is what we will be building today. Now, before we get into the actual coding, let me explain to you how this all works and hopefully you'll get a better image before you dive into the coding. So this is what happens. So we have two elements, button and a target, and we will be creating an override for each of these elements, override one and override two. And remember, override is kind of like a patch that you're applying to the design element and thus you are adding a little uh, function or you are overriding some of the properties of that element. These two will be written in the same TSX file. So we will create two separate overrides. And in addition to that, we will also add, um, we'll throw in here a couple values that each of these overrides can both share and manipulate these values. That's how these two overrides are going to communicate to each other. Otherwise, anything inside override cannot be seen outside. And the same goes with override too. So the only way for these two to communicate is in the root level or the global level of this file, we are um, having a couple values that each of these overrides can reference. Now I wanna talk about each of these overrides, but first let's start with override two because this one is very easy. What's override two doing? Override two is basically referencing the color over here and you're grabbing it and then you're outputting into this element right here. Boom, that's all what it's doing. Taking a color and rendering it to the element. Simple as that. Now what about this override one? So if somebody comes and clicks this button, it clicks, right? And then this override recognizes the click and then it changes the value of these data outside to something else. And now that the color is updated, that can be picked up by override two and rendered to the element. That's how these two are communicating. Now you might be wondering, why do we have two here, right? We could just have the background value and change between black and pink. Well, yes and no. You know, when somebody clicks the button, the override one can update black to pink and then render the color into this element. However, when we want to make a button that every time you click it toggles between the two, we need some kind of a way to manage those two states. And we cannot simply say the first time you click, change to pink, the second time you click, change to black, and you can't keep writing that, you know? But instead, we're introducing this Boolean value, you know, a value that holds either true or false. And by defining the override to toggle the states on click, um, we can have two states. And now what you're doing is you are associating this color to the states. And that's how you can toggle between two colors, okay? So now if I come here and click this button again, you can see that the value updates to off and then associated color black right and then what happens is that override 2 picks up that color and changes to black right so in the code these two data that's floating is actually going to be uh, wrapped into an object so this state management value we're going to call it is on it's confusing, but the value needs to be either truth or false. So we're gonna call it is on, false, is on, truth, okay? And for color, background, black, right? That's it. And we're going to wrap these into a thing called data object. And we're going to just reference it as a data. All right, so I hope you got the image. So again, we have override one and two. The override two simply picks up the color from here and outputs into the element. Override one, detect clicking. And when the click happens, they update these states. That's all what it does. So let's get into the actual coding. All right, so I'm gonna start from scratch. Let's just create a viewport. I am going to create a button here. I'm gonna change the radius to 16 and I'll make the button a little more blue. There we go throw in a text and call it button make it a little bigger make this white bold it here's my button now i need another element i'm just going to create a frame right and all right so again we're going to create two overrides now i can come here and just click this plus where the override is to create an override or if you don't see that yet, if this is your first time creating an override, you can come to the menu at the top left, go to code and do create override. That'll do the same thing. And make sure the override is selected here. And I'm gonna call this demo three, okay? Since I created demo one, demo two, this is mine. And 
this is an example. So first, I'm going to delete everything over here. Everything except this top one, okay? Now top one is simply importing some of the external references override data color these are all from the framer library there's a javascript library out there made by framer and we are using some of these capabilities defined in the library so we need to import it first right so just keep that there and we are going to create two overrides let me just label this one okay and we are going to type export function and let's call this override one okay and then you put column override in curly brackets like that okay and then inside here we're going to put return in curly brackets again this is not something you have to understand it's more like a like a syntax that you just need to memorize export function override and here name comes here uh, parenthesis colon um, override and curly brackets and here is where the the body of the override goes okay if this is still empty so we're creating two overrides so i'm just going to duplicate this and I'll call this number two and i'm going to call this number two okay so now we have two shells for two overrides, right? And in addition to that, remember we are trying to create a data object, right? So create a data object and call this let data equals data in parenthesis and inside a parenthesis curly bracket. And so this time, this is where the body of the data goes, okay? Let, so um, let is a type of variable that lets you change the data. And we're just calling this data. And this is again, a syntax that is, um, created by framer so let's not change this just memorize this and again all you have to worry about is this slash part this is where all the body goes if we go back to this view so we have two overrides and we have the data object right what do we have in the data object we have is on is false and background is black so let's apply this so remove this and we're going to call is on is false and comma um, background is black okay so this is going to be the data object that these two overrides will be sharing or referencing now let's start with override two because it's much simpler so what are we trying to do here so if we go back here we're simply just grabbing the color from the object and outputting to the element. So whatever that's written here is going to be output to the element. So we're just gonna write background equals um, something, right? How do we define a color when we're trying to reference this color right here? We're pulling this. So uh, we're going to write data dot background. That's it, it's data, this object, this is the object. And we want to reference the background attribute of the data and we write data dot background and now um, let's go back to the layer and see if i select this go to the override and select that one we just made demo three right and inside demo three we have override two override one and two let's select override two now if we preview this whole frame you can see it turns black that's because it's using the override two to pull the color from this data right here okay so override two is already done now let's work on override one so we want to understand when user tap so we're going to use on tap method okay and inside we're going to do two things first we want to manage the states the toggling right so again we're going to reference this guy so how do we write it data dot is on is so every time when somebody clicks it we want to switch this to the other state so in order to do that you put exclamation mark and then you write the same thing data dot is on so what this is doing is it's saying when somebody taps or clicks make data is on which is false right now to the opposite of data is on which means make false to truth true to false right that's it this is already a state um, so I'm gonna call this turning switch that's what it does all right now what are we doing next we're trying to assign color to each of the states so we're going to use data background so make the data background so this guy data background right now it's black change this to pink but we want to associate the states how do we do that so we're going to use this thing called ternary operator and this is basically a syntax to write if this is true then do this else do that right so this is how we do it. if data is on is you have to use two equals here so data is on is true 
This is a condition. Is it true? What a question. If true, then use the value pink. And if not, use the value black. That's it. This part is saying assign this whole thing to data background here, this guy, right? So this is saying when somebody taps it, switch the state of is on. If it's false, make it true. If it's true, make it false, right? And then it's saying, hey, see that data dot background, the background in the data object? I want to assign this value to that data background. So it can be either pink or black, but it's based on this condition. If data is dot is on is true, then use pink, else use black, okay? This is again, a, a ternary operator. It's a syntax that you just need to remember. Basically, that's it. So I'm just gonna put a little comment here and said linking color to, to states, right? And this should already take care of everything. Now, all we have to do is go back here and this one already has override assign. Now I gotta go to this button and do the same thing select demo three and override one right so let's take a look if i click now this should change to pink if i click again it changes to black right as simple as that and to you know if things don't work out um you can always throw in here a thing called a console log console log console log does nothing but just gives you a log of um the, what the system is calculating so um i'm just gonna put console.log and see data is on so this value i want to monitor this value so if i take a look it's right now working if i open this see how it gives me the value it returns me the value of data is on every time i click now if i change this to background and try it again let me just refresh this and now um hold on do like this and now see it's giving me the color when things don't work out you kind of want to diagnose where it's working where it's not and in order to do that you can use this console log just to see if the toggle is happening the color is updating and such but again with this we already have this working overrides and what's cool about this is that right now we just did background but you can use this to rotate or you can do opacity you can do different things in order to get different results or you can even combine them and toggle all of them at once to get a more rich effect as well so hopefully this gave you an idea of how to use override and i will um, share this in the description so if you want to just you know take this if you want to just take this and customize it to your needs you can go ahead and do that too all right well thanks for watching bye bye